Hi there. Thanks for watching. I'm Michael Dixon, and today I just wanted to talk a little bit about muscle memory. What it is, what it isn't, and why it's going to be kind of important to a lot of us in the not-too-distant future. So as you can see, I'm kind of battling the COVID coiffure up here, but uh, even more so lately, I've been doing battle with the, the pandemic paunch trying to keep it at bay. And uh, it's a challenge. When when this hit in, in March, I was on a real good roll in the gym, and then it suddenly came to a grinding halt. And I tried to tell myself that I was going to be disciplined and I was going to work out at home, and I just didn't. And uh, I've been... Uh, doing my best with uh, intermittent fasting, expanding my fasting window from 16 to 18, maybe 20 hours someday, maybe even 24 hour fast some days, uh, just to help with managing the weight. But I just haven't been working out as much as I have wanted to. And, uh, you know, along with intermittent fasting, I'm now doing intermittent exercise and it's just not that very good of a combination. I started weight training at a pretty young age in my early teens, and I tried to keep it up over the years, but there have been times when, uh, you know, I just haven't been able to get to the gym. And sometimes it's been two weeks and sometimes it's been two months. And to be honest, there's been stretches where it's probably been two years. But what I do find is when I get back into the gym, I will see uh, gains and growth uh, pretty quickly, especially compared to someone who has never trained before. And I always, uh, you know, attributed it to muscle memory, not really understanding what that meant. Uh, and I don't even know where I got the word from, if it was something I heard at the gym or if it's something I read in Muscle Mag. I have no idea. There are a few misconceptions about muscle memory. Some people think that uh, it's because they've been to the gym before and they learned how to do an arm curl, for example, that uh, they now know how to do that, their muscle remembers it, and uh, so they'll see progress more easily when they get back to the gym. And that's not really true. It's more of a brain memory than a muscle memory. Uh, a large part of um, the gains that you see when you first start working out is just your brain teaching your body to adapt to new movement under load. Now, another misconception is uh, it's like riding a bicycle or swimming. Uh, you know, you could ride a bicycle when you were 12, and if you didn't do it for 20 years, you could, you know, go back and do it tomorrow. And that also is a brain memory, not a muscle memory. That is your brain has taught your body to do a complex series of movements in order to swim or ride a bicycle. And while doing that, it has formed new pathways within your brain so that eventually your body can just perform the task without having to think about it. And again, that's brain memory, not muscle memory. So what is muscle memory? Well, for starters, it's a bit of a misnomer. It's not really muscle memory so much as it is a muscle history. The muscle has done the work before, the groundwork has been laid, and it's ready to do the work again when called upon, even if it hasn't done that work for quite some time. And I'll explain how. And be prepared to be entertained, informed, and amazed because you're going to see my first ever biological diagrams. And they're awesome. When you first start working out, you're overloading your muscles, you're tearing down muscle tissue, and the body has to rebuild it. But the body's smart. It doesn't want to just rebuild the muscle the way it was. It wants to rebuild it bigger and stronger so that next time it'll be prepared. Now, in the muscle, there are cells, and in each cell, there is a nuclei, a myonuclei. And it is the brain of the cell that is responsible for protein synthesis, which helps the muscle to grow bigger and stronger. Now, each cell has one nuclei, and that nuclei can only handle a certain amount of territory, so to speak. Now, if the muscle wants to grow and the cell needs to grow, it needs to recruit more nuclei into the cell to help cover more territory so the cell can grow bigger and the muscle can grow bigger. And the body can do that. It has the muscle cell recruit uh, nuclei from satellite cells around the muscle. And when it, it draws the nuclei in, it then can grow bigger and stronger, having helped to manage more territory, so to speak. And this process continues over and over again. Every time you exercise, you break down the muscle, the muscle has to grow back bigger and stronger, and the cell has to recruit uh, more nuclei in order to help that process. Now, this can pose a, a slight problem with regard to plateauing. Now, when the muscle gets big and strong, the muscle cell gets bigger and stronger and has recruited multiple nuclei, it becomes more and more difficult for the body to convince it to recruit more nuclei as needed. And in times like that, you have to shock the body. You have to shock the muscle to, uh, to help the body convince it that it needs more nuclei. It needs to grow bigger and stronger. To do that, you know, you start lifting heavier weight. You start, uh, you know, attacking the muscle from a different angle or you, you mix in new exercises and force the muscle to adapt. But the beauty of all this and kind of the point of the whole video 
is in times like this, when we're not able to get to the gym on a regular basis, when we don't get our workouts in, what happens is the muscle shrinks and weakens, it atrophies, and the muscle cell shrinks and weakens. But all those nuclei that have been recruited into the cell, they stay there. So when we do get back to the gym, when we get back to our routine and start shocking the muscle and start tearing down the muscle so it has to rebuild again, all the nuclei are already there, ready to do the work. So you don't have to put all the time and effort into making the body recruit them all into the cell. The groundwork has been laid. And as soon as you put the work in, you will see the gains. You'll see the body respond a lot quicker than it ever did before. So you can take some comfort in that. Oh, um, one caveat that I should probably add that you should be aware of is uh, this principle, this retention of the nuclei within the cell, that happens within the cells of the muscle. It doesn't appear to happen within the cells of the uh, ligaments and tendons. So that's just something you need to be aware of. So when you do get back to the gym and you start getting, you know, your workouts in and you're getting bigger and stronger, just take your time a little bit because uh, your muscle will get bigger and stronger faster than your ligaments or tendons and just to avoid injury. Okay, I think that is it. I think I covered off everything that I wanted to talk about today. I hope you found it helpful or informative. Um, if you have any questions, as always, just leave them in the comments section below. I always try to respond as quickly as possible. Um, if you have any experience with muscle memory of your own, please feel free to share below. And if you would like to let me know what you thought of my world-class biological diagrams, I'd be interested to hear. Um, if you care to like and or subscribe, as always, much appreciated. I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there and I will see you next time.